Hi there, this is Alex Mitchell, the career counselor for Agents of Change. I've helped hundreds of individuals just like you prepare for their interviews, prepare for their next positions, and achieve their career goals. And I'm excited today to be talking with you about the top five social work interview tips. These are really designed to help you prepare for and make the most out of the interview stage. Obviously, this is just one stage. We'll be bringing other videos and podcasts in the future to cover the other important stages of finding the perfect job for your career. But today, we're starting with the interview. And so you've made it to the interview. Um, you're watching this video. Hopefully, you have that interview coming up. That's a big step. So congratulations. You should really be proud of that. Um, there are many stages that take uh, part you know, before that, and you made it to the interview, which is great. So congratulations. But right, the work is not done yet. Um, the interview is really your opportunity to you know, come off the page, right? They might have just read your resume so far, cover letter, seen some background about you on LinkedIn. This is your opportunity to really jump off the page, to convey your enthusiasm, your qualifications for the role. Of course, ask great questions. It's your opportunity to really connect with that interviewer and with the agency or organization you're interested in. And so really just keep that in mind as we go through these tips, as you are really trying to connect, you're trying to be enthusiastic, and you're trying to convey more than what was just on the page, on your resume or your cover letter. And so it really all starts with research. So it starts you know, days before, ideally a week or so before, for you to really spend the time researching that agency or that organization that you're interested in. And so the basics are, of course, looking over the position description that you initially saw when you applied, but go deeper. So look at their website, understand their mission statement, understand their size, and look them up on LinkedIn, see you know, maybe what they're posting on social media. Are they posting things on Twitter? Are they interacting with certain hashtags? Where are they on social media? You can really learn a lot about an organization by just going and seeing what they're doing on social. So I really encourage you to spend a serious amount of time doing research. Um, it's not uncommon when I work with people applying for jobs to tell them to spend you know, hours uh, of research for each job position. Um, it really does pay off. And you'll see as we get into these other tips, having that baseline of understanding of the organization that you're applying to, what they stand for, what they care about, what their goals are, what their mission is, goes such a long way. Um, in addition to finding things on social, you should also check Google News, especially if they're a bigger organization. Are there any announcements that they've had, any you know, PR that they've been involved in recently? Um, these can kind of yield great talking points. Uh, they can yield great questions. And you'll be surprised. Um, there will just be natural opportunities to often bring up this information in the midst of the interview. And as the interviewer on the other side of the table, if they hear you bringing up these things that you know, they care about, that they've been mentioned in news about, they're gonna know you've done your research. And usually the people who do research on their interviews are the people who will do research in their job and will do you know, their due diligence and, and put in a lot of effort at work. Those things are very uh, correlated with each other. So research is important. And again, I recommend you know, at least really a week before that, that interview. So you have plenty of time to kind of absorb what's going on with this, this organization and what they care about. Two is practice. Actually, practice, practice, practice. Um, and we've written that a couple times deliberately. Um, really, you should practice many times before heading into the interview. Uh, we actually often recommend if you have a friend or a coworker or a you know, colleague that you can get uh, to act as the interviewer, um, that is a great way to prepare for your interview. Have them you know, act as, as if, ask you questions, maybe keep you a little bit on your toes, ask you about items on your resume or your cover letter. Um, really important that you feel at ease coming to an interview in one great way is by having those practice reps ahead of time. Um, so again, common interview questions. Again, if you can't find that partner, it's okay to just practice saying these out loud. Um, it's just good to practice getting the right words together in the right order to tell your story, to tell you know how you you know act as a practitioner, um, how you care about you know certain issues and and want to grow in certain areas. 
those are really important. And again, you know, practicing it out loud, it's going to feel natural then if you've said it three or four times out loud and, and the interviewer asks you about it, you're going to feel really good about the way you can answer that question. Um, in addition to just kind of being ready for those common questions, you know, make sure you look at actually what's on your resume. What questions do you think the interviewer would ask you about on your resume? You'd probably dig into, you know, your more recent experience, maybe things you've learned from that experience, things that went well or didn't go well. So kind of think ahead of time what they're going to ask you based on your cover letter or resume that you've submitted. And you don't just want to say the same thing that's on the resume or in the bullet points. Be prepared to tell little stories. Um, typically, I say, you know, 30 to 60 seconds per answer that you're giving to the interviewer is about right. You know, sometimes it might be shorter, sometimes it might be longer, that's fine. But generally in that time, you can do a really good job of bringing that detail to life, showing emotion with it, showing what you've learned about it. So you really have that opportunity to fill in any gaps that might not be visible on the paper and to just bring that content off the paper, bring it to life. Um, and so that's what you should really think. And practice is a great way to feel comfortable doing that. So either find a partner. If you can't find a partner, that's fine. Just practice saying it out loud several times. Practice answering those common questions. You'll be really happy you did once you get into that interview. The third one here is to highlight your special qualities. Again, another thing that sometimes is not obvious on a resume or a cover letter, even if you tried to call it out or you spend some time talking about it, interviewers uh, are typically pretty busy, right? They might have missed that unique detail. Um, it might not have fully you know, come across to them. They might not have comprehended it fully. So you know, make sure that those unique qualities that you have, that you are the best at, uh, really come across in that interview. So unique things you've done. Um, achievements you've had that could set you apart from potential other candidates that could be out there. So one example is, you know, maybe you have some special training or you've done, you know, kind of things in an area that not many others have that, that have allowed you to build unique skills that fit this position. Again, try and connect them is always your goal to connect that training or those skills to the position you're applying for. So those are great ones to kind of highlight that show your unique qualities. Another unique thing about you um, is your personality. And so make sure you can kind of convey that in this interview and you can highlight how that personality is a strong fit or an add to their organization um, and you know, why it's compatible with the company and the position. So tying this back to that first one, remember the research topic. If you've researched you know, things in the news or things in social media that this agency or organization is interacting with, Hopefully those are things that you really care about, that are things that are important to you and your practice. So make sure you kind of show the unique qualities you have that tie those together. You know, your interests, your background, your skills, and the things that this organization is demonstrating they care about. So really make sure you highlight those special qualities. I even recommend often to the folks I work with to write down those two or three or four even special qualities that you wanna make sure you convey through the stories you tell, through the way you answer questions, just write them down so you really feel comfortable you know, knowing what those unique qualities are. We often don't think about them enough, um, so I encourage you to put some deep thought into it and really write down those unique qualities. The fourth one, asking thoughtful questions. Um, all of us have probably been in interviews before, um, and so we know that the last step of an interview often is, do you have any questions for me? The interviewer will ask you that question, and really the worst thing that you can have is no questions for, for the interviewer, for the organization. Um, the second worst thing is to have really poorly prepared or not thoughtful questions. These questions are your opportunity to really demonstrate your curiosity your interest for the role, to ask for information that might not be obvious um, should kind of be your goal here. And so again, with curiosity, your goal is to really be, you know, demonstrate that curiosity through these questions. So of course you wanna keep them professional and on topic, but it's your opportunity to maybe explore some of those things you've learned through your research further, um, to ask that interviewer, you know, maybe more about the you know day to day experience of people in this position and, you know, things that they're passionate about 
Um, so demonstrate really your interest through that curiosity. Um, I mentioned kind of the second worst thing you can do is just ask questions to fill the space. Um, so you shouldn't be asking questions that are, are very obvious on the job description or are very obvious on the website. Um, those would actually show that you haven't done your research. Um, they would backfire in terms of questions. So make sure you plan these questions ahead of time. Um, I often recommend writing down three or four. Um, you probably really only want to ask about two or so, depending on how deep the questions are and how much time you have. But it's good to have a few extras just in case, you know, maybe questions one and two that I had prepared ahead of time got answered over the course of the interview, which is great. So I have three and four ready to go. Um, and it's okay to write these down. It's okay to have them in front of you during the interview. I've actually had folks, uh, you know, get praise from their interviewers that saw that they had these questions written down ahead of time. Again, it shows you've done your research. It shows you really care about this position that you put in the time to think about thoughtful questions. So preparation is an important part of this question asking process. Don't treat the questions as an afterthought. Um, they are a really important way to help you stand out from the crowd. And the last one here, um, be mindful of body language. Um, your interview may be in person, it may be virtual, but either way, body language is very important. It can say a lot, even if you don't mean it to say a lot. So, you know, maybe if you're not making eye contact, maybe you're doing, you know, kind of no gestures or too many gestures, or maybe you're slouched in your chair, um, which is visible even on a, you know, a virtual call. These are things that, you know, convey information, whether you want it to or not. It may convey you're not actually that interested. It may convey you're distracted. Maybe you're, you have something in a separate screen while you're on a video chat with someone. That would be pretty bad. Um, so a great way to improve your body language or at least be aware of it is again to do those mock interviews. Um, so hopefully, you know, if you have a significant other or a friend or a colleague that you can practice your answers with, they can really focus on that body language and give you some tips. Hey, Alex, you may not have noticed, but you were looking down a lot. Um, you were looking at your notes instead of actually focusing on me. Or, you know, Alex, I, I noticed you were, you know, looking away a lot, or, you know, maybe you were kind of like leaning out of the screen sometimes. You weren't really framed well inside the screen, or you were, you know, kind of too slouched down in your chair. That's great feedback to get before, before the interview, of course. Um, another thing that's important here, too, is, is, you know, I mentioned eye contact, but active listening. Um, this is, you know, not just body language, but it's, being engaged in what the interviewer is saying. Um, so, you know, maybe you answer a question, they give a response. Uh, don't already be thinking about the next, you know, question you want to ask. Listen to that response. Listen to what they're saying. You know, demonstrate your curiosity about it. You know, ask a follow-up question based on what they said. Really, you know, active listening can be an important part of this back and forth with the interviewer as well. Uh, finally, energy level is also important. Uh, interviews can be stressful, right? Even with all this preparation, you know, interviews are, you know, something we don't practice all the time. And so they can be a little stressful. And as we know, you know, stress manifests in other ways. Sometimes we have, you know, too low of energy, sometimes too high. Uh, so, you know, kind of practice those interviews and have that mock interviewer give you feedback about your level of energy. You know, are you speaking too quickly? Are you speaking too slowly? Does your voice sound bored? Does it sound excited? Uh, so you want to have an appropriate energy level. You don't want to be talking a mile a minute. You don't want to be bouncing off the walls, highly caffeinated, uh, you know, those kind of things. Um, but you don't, of course, want to be disengaged. So it's that right balance that, again, you can master through practice, through feedback from colleagues, friends, significant others. So be mindful of your body language, your energy, your focus, your eye contact, very, very important um, and a very, very important thing um, that people don't often think about a lot with their interviews. So those are our five tips. Hopefully these are very helpful for you as you prepare for your interviews. As I mentioned, uh, look forward for future podcast and video content covering other parts of applying for the jobs of your dreams in social work. Um, if you're looking for study content for your ASWB exams, check out agentsofchangeprep.com, 
where you can find both free and paid content for the bachelor's, master's, and clinical ASWB exams. And as always, you can reach out to us at any time at contact at agentsofchangeprep.com. So just wanted to leave you with one last thing. You've got this. Again, congratulations on getting that interview. You're going to nail it. Uh, if you follow these tips and you really put in the practice and the preparation, you will do great. You will get that position. 